I would like to tell my story to help other victims from being used. In April of this year, 2018, I got a friend request from I thought was a good looking soldier. So I thought, wow, he must think I'm cute. We chatted a few times, probably two months. He told me he was in Syria and was a lieutenant in the army. Me, being lonely and vulnerable, and not to mention dumb, I fell for his lies. At first, he was saying he would like to take his vacation, and I thought, cool, he can come to Texas, and we can be together. Wrong. It turned out he gave me a fake email account to the United Nations, asking me to put in for his vacation. So, a couple of days later, lo and behold, I get a response, but it said he needed $800 for flight, logistics, all a bunch of BS, but nevertheless, I fell for it. I borrowed the money from my dad, telling him this guy's in the military, wanted to marry me, and so on. My dad sent me a check, and he wasn't happy about this. Well, the guy asked me to wire the money to three different people, supposedly staff members in the military, and that they would handle the vacation arrangements. It took a fifth time doing a Walmart-to-Walmart -Walmart money transfer for it to finally go through. The first four times the money was returned to me. This tells you how stupid I am and felt. The next day, the fake sent me a picture of a plane ticket, telling me the UN wanted $1,000 more for BTA charges, supposedly shots, to come back to the States. I freaked out and went off on him. I stopped all communication and blocked him. I've been divorced going on three years and was lonely. But now I don't accept new friend requests unless I know the person, and I take this as a hard lesson. Watch out, folks, because they're out for themselves and they don't give a damn about us. Now, I owe my dad, and it's going to take a while to make things up to him. Thanks for listening. Be safe online. I'd like to remain anonymous, but if this helps someone else, it'll make me happy. I'd like to also add that no victim is ever dumb or stupid. Everybody is a victim of a crime, so please keep that in mind when listening to these stories. Story number two. I'm single. I live in Malaysia and have been using Tinder for a few years now and never had any issues with it. I even used it in other countries and met some nice guys, but only one resulted in a short-term relationship, and so I'm still single. I'm over 40, and it's not easy to meet single men in the same generation. So Tinder is a convenient way, which I use at home and when I travel. I didn't have second thoughts about matching with a guy from Romania recently. I was even quite happy to be in contact with someone from a country I've never visited and know a little about. We started to chat, and he told me that he was divorced with two kids working on an oil rig on the East Coast. I still didn't have second thoughts at that point because... I don't know anyone working on oil rigs, so I just kept the chat light, and he contacted me once a day. This went on for three weeks, and he started to get flirty with his texts, which I also didn't mind. After all, we're both supposedly single, so why not? I had also mentioned to him, after about a week of chatting, that we should meet when he comes over to my city next. He acted a bit surprised that I wanted to meet. But I said I wanted to have a real conversation with him, and he agreed by saying we could meet in a coffee bar when he next came to my city. Near the third week of our chats, he said he wanted to get things straight about why we were chatting, and that he was looking for a life partner and wanted to know what my opinion was. I told him that I'd never been married and may have different values than him, but he said that was okay and we could see how things come along. Then, I mentioned again that we should meet, and he said it was a great idea and that we would plan for it. Just that he didn't have any schedule to come to my city for that month, and he would have to see. Maybe it would be possible the following month, if I was willing to wait. And I said, well, there was no rush, so he continued our chat. Sometime during the fourth week, after a short flirty chat at night, 
He sent me a long message after midnight to reintroduce himself and say that he was looking for long term. He gave me his full name with his surname that didn't sound Romanian at all. At that point, my suspicions started to kick in. I asked my friend if they had any contacts who would check whether anybody with that name or profile was on an oil rig on the East Coast. I found one friend who said he could check for me, but it took two weeks for him to get back to me. He said there were too many people working there to be able to verify whether this Romanian contractor with that profile was there. In any case, after he had sent me the long message, I told him that we had chatted enough and we should meet if he wanted to take it any further. Again, he said that he would let me know when he had a schedule to go to land. I also had been in contact with a girlfriend about my conversations with him, and she warned me that his oil rig story was a common one among scammers. After talking to her, I did some research about life on oil rigs, and I noticed one article that mentioned that alcohol and drugs are banned on oil rigs. This supposedly Romanian man had mentioned during one of our chats that he had had a glass of red wine that he bought at the galley one day after work to relax. I double-checked this fact with a friend who had contacts working on rigs, and he said that alcohol is indeed completely banned from the rigs. I had also done a search on this man when he gave me his full name, and this name was nowhere to be found except in one scammer forum where his profile was flagged. Also, in the weeks that followed, after we stopped chatting, a profile on Facebook and Instagram appeared with his name and more pictures. This profile picture on Instagram looked strange to me, and upon closer examination I was quite sure that the head of the man in the picture was photoshopped onto another body. All these clues put together were confirmation for me that the man I had been chatting with was not the same person as in the picture. However, I had not suspected anything in the beginning because I was quite sure that the man in the pictures is indeed Romanian. He was just unfortunately not the person who had been flirting with me. His English was alright for a non-native speaker, and not atrocious like some scammers. But, there. Also, the scammers' stories I had heard before were always of them posing as British or American men. Never of a Romanian man. But now I know that they can try to pretend to be of any nationality. I am glad that I have the presence of mind to do some fact-checking, which gave me all the answers I needed. Because although the scammer was smooth at times, he wasn't very clever at all. And story number three. I found myself entangled in a romance scam this year, 2018, which just ended when I blocked the fake profile and stopped all communication. I met the man I come to know as George Carlson in March of 2018. He said he was an engineer working on an oil rig off the coast of Norway. We met on the site tagged. He sent me a message and then asked for my number. Stupid me, I gave it to him. We texted at first, late into the night. We talked about religion, movies, and music. He sent me songs via YouTube. Yes, romantic ones. I found myself chatting away every night with this man. One morning, he finally called me. While his accent sounded strange, like something I'd never heard before, he said he was from Norway, but his parents were from Italy and he was raised in Italy. I honestly had never talked to a man from abroad, so I didn't know that the accent was really a Nigerian. He sent me love poems and songs daily. I woke up to good morning beautiful texts and late night good night beautiful texts and thinking of you. I felt loved and appreciated. Over the months, the romance continued. He asked about his contract ending and he would come to visit me. I was overwhelmed with the idea of finally meeting this man face to face and starting our romance in person. He never once asked for money in all the months we spoke both in text and on the phone. Then, the day before he was set to leave, he said there was a huge accident at the workstation. The crew of 12, who all happened to be Nigerians, were injured. One was killed. He said that 
Since he was the company owner, the family of one of the Nigerian men killed in the accident was demanding money for his accidental death. A $5,800 installment. He said his account was frozen until he returned home and asked me if I would make the first installment and in payment. He said he would pay me double when he arrived here. I stupidly believed him. He said he couldn't leave until the payment was made or have to face the dead man's family, hurting or even killing him. Long story short, I sent two payments via Western Union to Lagos, Nigeria to this man's apparent family. Come to find out, this so-called family member was the scammer behind it all along. I ended up blocking the fake profile, but his calls and texts were relentless. I had to change my phone number and delete WhatsApp from my phone. It was a nightmare, and I'm still paying for it. Worst of all, he took from me my sense of trust and humanity in people. We'd like to thank everybody for sharing their story. If you'd like your story told, you can find us on Facebook at Scamming Scammers Action. Drop your story in our inbox. You can remain anonymous, and we'll add you to the list for our next video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and again, if you need any kind of assistance, you can find us on Facebook at Scamming Scammers Action. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.